The U.S. is in the middle of a government shutdown, and if it doesn't end soon, it'll be the longest in history. But to be clear, this is a partial shutdown, which means that 75% of the government was approved for funding in the new year, and the rest got caught up in the demands from President Donald Trump to build a wall on the southern border for over $5 billion. Since the shutdown began at the end of December 2018, it has affected thousands of scientists and made lasting impacts on the scientific community. Even for a partial shutdown, we're looking at nine government departments affected, with nearly 400,000 federal employees furloughed, meaning they've been put on leave without pay. Only those deemed essential are left to be part of the skeleton workforce that operate the facilities also without pay. And scientific communities are taking a toll. The agencies affected include NASA, NOAA, the National Science Foundation, and the National Park Service, just to name a few. These are some of the biggest funders of grants and projects across the country. Without government money coming to fund the research, thousands of scientists are now out of pay, out of work, and losing valuable information from their labs. And the impact is being felt outside government grounds as well. Even if you're not a federal employee, but your research is funded by one of the federal science powerhouses, your progress is still affected. And some experiments can't just be put on pause. Ongoing research, like the state of our ecosystem, is constantly collected and analyzed. Science Magazine reported about an entomologist at Michigan State University whose endangered bumblebees are just sitting in a fridge in his lab waiting to be shipped to the USDA laboratories, but they're closed. He explains that this delay could cost him a whole year of progress. At San Francisco State University, William Chadwick works as a research technician in cellular molecular biology, analyzing and manipulating yeast cells, specifically for their waste removal organelle called the vacuole. Humans have organelles in their cells called lysosomes that have the same function of the vacuole. So by looking at mutated yeast strands, Chadwick can find correlations back to humans, even sometimes helping progress research with disease. Essentially what happens in uh, the example that I always give called Batten disease, it's, a, it's an infantile disease that usually kills, uh, kills the children. There are too many lysosomes because they can't break things down. And so the body can't break down things it needs to. And we found a way to recover that gene that, that creates Batten disease. So it's called BTN1. And so if we can fix that, uh, that disease that occurs in yeast, and so the idea is we can use that same gene to create a gene therapy for people suffering from Batten disease but his lab can't get their contacts from the National Science Foundation to help them proceed to the next steps. So they'll be pushed six months behind. What does a six month delay look like? And if labs can't um, access research or, or access funding, then it just prevents or pushes back the development of, of a cure. And so if a child who would have had a cure in six months doesn't for another five years and passes between those two points, then um, that's just kind of the easiest way to think of how it affects people and funding and research and science and society in general. And just because you're not a scientist or don't have a disease doesn't mean you're off the hook either. Researchers collect a lot of critical data that the average person doesn't even think about, and we use it to power our everyday lives, like weather forecasts, for example. During the shutdown, national weather forecasts are going to be worse because there aren't enough people to maintain and repair malfunctioning programs. It may seem trivial, but winter is prime time for updates to hurricane models, and they use this time to train emergency managers for the next storm season. But that's at a halt. The government shutdown is also having a ripple effect on an international level. At the beginning of January, NASA completed a flyby to the most distant object we've ever visited in history, and yet, they couldn't share their accomplishment with their fellow peers. It's estimated that 1,000 federal employees couldn't attend the American Astronomical Society or American Meteorological Society conferences to share and exchange knowledge from the year. Some scientists say the U.S. absence is not only a missed chance to learn, but also a possible turning point for the U.S. to fall behind in scientific research. The list goes on and on about the countless impacts this partial government shutdown has caused. And every day it progresses, the impacts reach more and more people and they get worse. With no end in sight, we can only hope that it'll be over quickly and we can bounce back better than before. What do you think about all of this? Tell us down below and if you've ever wondered how scientists can work together even when their countries don't, watch this video here. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Seeker.